Welcome back to part three of Where is God's Help? We're looking at Romans, the eighth chapter, verse 28. God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Notice the two conditions. Love God and are called according to his purpose. This is Christians, those who called upon Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now this promise is a conditional promise. It is to those who are in relationship with God. Now the unsaved are not in relationship with God, and Romans 8.28 is not a promise for them. But there is still time for them to call upon Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, as we've already covered. For the unbelievers of this age, and I've noticed several articles recently in the context of this latest disease and its repercussions both physically but also emotionally and societally. There are unbelievers who are saying we live in a very, now this word is pronounced three different ways in English, English, and Americanized English. It's nihilism, nihilism, nihilism. Take your pick. All three, no matter how you pronounce them, means a rejection of traditional values. In philosophy and in theology, we take it a step further in looking at it is a rejection of absolute values. Thus, such a viewpoint means existence makes no sense. Existence is meaningless. It's a pointless life. Now, God describes how this happens earlier in the book of Romans. We're in the eighth chapter. Look at Romans, the first chapter. Those who are not in relationship with God. They do not come to God by faith. Notice the context uh, of them in Romans chapter 1, verse 21. For even though they knew God, they knew of his existence, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and gave their fool and their foolish heart was darkened. They did not come to God, follow God, honor God, obey God, or give thanks to him. So in rejecting God's plan, they are not in the context of Romans 8, 28, but they can be for any sinner who calls upon the Lord will indeed be saved. Romans 10, 13, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Now that doesn't mean that there is not good things that come into their lives. Indeed, there is. There are aspects of common grace in Matthew, the fifth chapter there in verse 49. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. God sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. We refer to this as common grace. There are blessings God places in the life both of believers and unbelievers, the just and the unjust. And But there's still time for those to come to him. We saw when we looked at Matthew, there's a wide gate and path that leads to destruction and judgment. And there's a narrow gate and a narrow path, the path of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. In so doing, we should be thankful and rejoicing. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, those in relationship with the Lord, always, but notice in Philippians 4, 4, it's repeated in a different way, rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. That doesn't mean we rejoice when evil things happen, but when bad, evil things happen, we rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because God can cause all things to work together for the good of them who love him and are called according to his purpose. In the Lord, the path of God's grace, salvation, forgiveness, new life, and eternity in heaven with God. Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 13, whoever calls the name of the Lord will be saved. Have you personally called upon Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You can, then in relationship with God, no matter what happens today or tomorrow, Romans 28 is true. God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Now, Christians, we need to be reminded that in Christ, this verse is true. We need to have the eternal perspective that King David had, even when the death of those very near us, even at a great age, middle age, or a very young age, we need to trust God. We used to sing a song years ago in the church, Farther Along. We don't understand it. Farther Along, we'll understand it. By and by, someday we'll understand it. But right now, let us trust God in all things and through all things. For some of us, 
You might phrase it as we need to forgive God, but God's perfect. He's never done a wrong thing. Everything God does is good and perfect. Some of us actually need to apologize and confess to God that we did not trust him when we saw bad things happening around us. And perhaps we were even tempted to ask God where he was or ask God, don't you still love me? Remember the mothers? wanting their children not to suffer and not to die, they received injections that were quite painful at that time. But they served a very good and useful long-term benefit. God looks beyond the long-term. God looks at the eternal. That is definitely a long-range view. So we need, in our trust of God, to know that Romans 8th chapter, verse 28, is true for those who are in Christ. God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose, even when we can't see it. Even in some cases, when we don't even want to hear it, that verse is always true, for it's God's word, and God's word never returns void. So some of us need to confess and apologize to God. We didn't trust him in the past. Maybe we're not trusting him now. We all have places where our faith can indeed be tested. But it's good to get these things right with God. In some cases, we also need to forgive others. God is at work, should we not trust him, even before we get farther along. For those who, we need a reminder in God's word that we're to trust God. Why? Romans eight twenty eight. God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. It is not only in the word of God, it is even on our money. In God we trust. But remember, that promise only holds for those who are in relationship with God. If you are, trust him. If you're not, call upon Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And this and all the other promises that God gives to his children will be true in your life. Thank you for everyone who participated in our challenge for Mother's Day. We have a challenge coming up for Father's Day. Here's the challenge for Father's Day. Examples, there we go, the Bible challenge is Morgan Mill Baptist Church, Post Office Box 38, Morgan Mill, Texas. The target date is for Sunday, June the 21st, 2020. This is examples of John Wayne quotes with biblical underpinnings. Examples of John Wayne quotes with biblical underpinnings. Are you surprised that's going to be for Father's Day? We already have one picked out, but you might have a better one than that. So that's our challenge for our fathers. John Wayne quotes. We looked up to our mothers in many cases, hopefully in all of our cases. If not, and even sometimes we look up to our fathers or not. But remember that God is a perfect Heavenly Father. God never makes mistakes. He never does anything wrong. And he cannot lie. Everything God does is good. God can even take the bad things in this world, sin and its consequences, and use those things for his glory and for our good. Let us pray. Father, we're thankful for these many promises that you give your children. We pray, Father, there's any there who have not called upon your Son as their Lord and Savior, that they would do so today. Then all those who have called upon your Son as their Lord and Savior, in you, Father, we thank you for all of your blessings, but specifically for your blessings in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Thank you, Father, for being in control of the world and our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.